ply wire harness. The name synonymous to quality, function, durability, and even elegance. We will talk about their design process, their intentions, and what makes this good and even better than the usual harness that we know. Not just aesthetically, but even internally and in functionality. And after watching this video, you will know what makes a great ECU and also the ideas they have and the design properties and also the discipline when it comes to building this harness. And the well-deserved portion for this masterfully done EF9 that runs a Clearwire harness and runs 13 sevens, you know? We will be talking about the proper crimping technique that Clywire does and also what makes it consistent and when you see the intertwined wires, it's not just for looks and all that. Clywire factors in fatigue performance which covers the durability, the consistency, and the longevity of the system that it works really good for you. We will also delve into the design principles of rubber grommets using a CAD via Fusion 360 to get you the most proper grommets available that's chemically resistant rubber and you will be surprised that you'll know more about electrical stuff and things after this for now let's go to the eye bolts and ply wires proper crimping techniques that takes no shortcuts or whatsoever now on to crimping wires properly as you can see here it's crimped really well like to the point that every almost every single strand of the wire has good contact you know this makes it a lot more efficient you know because with less contact it's as bad as more resistance and what's funny is back in 2016 or 17 Clywire actually schooled me on the eye bolt because if you look here the crimping area the closest one to the eye bolt and the one farther i thought it was just double for more strength but no it's supposed to crimp on the wire and the farther one is supposed to crimp on the wire housing this way when you pull on the wire it doesn't pull the wire strands from the inside ruining the contact you know it doubles the strength but also holds it better securely. I bet you didn't know that, right? Because I didn't. And especially your shade tree mechanic probably don't know that. So you would wonder after a year or two why it's acting up, right? Now, before we talk about why the wire strands are go, they go twisted like this, they actually had a jig made for crimping properly each wire. Look, that's why it's clean. Look at all those jig, right? That's dedication to their craft. And here's the TPS socket, and you can see the old wires, right? And the IAT sensor, and you can see the wires are getting pulled, right? And just like on this one, it's still stressed out. Or strained that's why if you've seen Clywire do this that's for the very same reason when you pull it on the wire it doesn't directly strain the pins or the crimp pins this way it's a lot more durable so as you build your engines for better durability Clywire would last as long or even longer actually you know and for those who are wondering, the eye bolt terminals are called double open barrel type. And it's funny because you don't they don't have to get that. But as Clarewire prefers durability, they use the double open barrel type. And it's interesting because this lets you know your hard earned money is well worth the product. Now on to my favorite one. A lot of you guys think that they're intertwined or the strands are spinning 
or turn for looks or that so it looks cool but in reality it has its own purpose it's for strength and durability because bear with me for a moment here when you look at this when you bend it 90 degrees to the left you know the short turn is way shorter than the long turn so it gets compressed and then it gets pulled or stretched, right? And here's another diagram that shows all the different strands. You can see the short turn and the long turn, the length are totally far apart, right? And this what makes intertwining the wires or swirling it give more durability. And we can see a lot of people wire it up just straight and all that, right? And of course, we would think everything is fine, but sooner or later, you will start to have gremlins because the stress points of each wire is different. And if you look here on the wire strand of a common wire, it's twisted. We never noticed this, but it is. And look at the high end wires, they all do the same thing to alleviate stress from everywhere, you know? And this part is more of like a public awareness because the insides of the harness, you'll never see it, right? And a lot of common electrical guys would think that they could do as good or as well. But when you think about it, if they don't do this kind of work detail, it's not going to last as long. And the problem with that is that it gets masked with what they call in psychology, toxic positivity. You gotta search on that because this would let you know how your own Facebook has turned. You know, it actually helps, you know, search on toxic positivity. Now going back to this, this actually helps on on a T-junction or an outlet like on this picture. Look at this. You can actually say it's strategically intertwined, as you can see here. As you pull it, the stress is more equal or it's not concentrated on one wire. And here, if it's like a, on the same direction outlet, it's still good and safe. It's durable. And going back to this, you can see the short turn is compression and the long turn is getting tension, you know. And this is the stress distribution of a wire or of anything that you bend. You you know and you can see here this is how the insides of a normal wire is and this is what ply wire does it the cyclic bending load is more equal you know this lets you know that durability and longevity is what is the priority with ply wire now let me bring up something really really interesting the red in this photo is actually the yellow black wire you know so pardon me for that i chose red so that's easily visible when you look at this not many especially the local electricians have no idea that the yellow black wire is actually positive and it's constant so the ECU just throws signals that are ground, you know? So when you think about it, they can easily tap whatever light or sensor that they need from this wire and it disrupts every single reading of each sensor, even the injectors, you know? So this is why you guys have gremlins, you know? And this is wrong when you tap this, you know, do not tap this. And this is what makes the ply wire harness superior because it ensures that all of this is functioning 100% correct. This reminds me of a car that was having gremlins and I asked the owner if they did anything to the car and he says nothing. But I, I can see they added a service light on the engine bay, some random service light on the dashboard under the driver. And when you know the wiring diagram passes through all that. So when it says nothing, that's like beyond the six letter word, right? for both the owner and the so-called electrician that did that. Even ground alone isn't that sim simple. There's three kinds. One is power ground, then sensor ground, and drain or shield ground. So there's three kinds, you know. So when you think about it, our map sensor, our idle air temp sensor, and everything else are zero to five volts. So if you got inaccurate ground, are you welcoming gremlins? And as I mentioned, that Kyle Wire designs the rubber grommets on a on Fusion 360, 
and that's why it looks really really good here's an example of their drawing and design approach look at that and the fitment is excellent it actually does the job really really well and you can see here they actually use a fluorocarbon rubber material mostly found in aerospace applications it's more superior than uh, the EPDM that's mostly used in automotive industries see so you know this one is better on the firewall it actually looks clean right it makes you want to clean your car up and here's from the inside see and this is how it looks on the engine itself there is no way you would want to tuck those beautifully labeled harness right excellent and here's where you can see dedication they actually cut up some of the rubber grommets just to see how consistent it is you know where do you find that when they test their own product just to be sure of the durability and reliability just for you you know this is actually a raycam mil spec transition boot you know it's actually mil spec and their finished product there is housed on two different kinds of wire sleeve one is an acrylic coated fiber sleeve and the other is a dr25 compatible which is diesel resistant which is fluid resistant and temperature resistant up to 150 degrees celsius that's hot and here you can see this is how it is as it gets shipped to you guys it looks really really good right we've decided to run this on each specific engine so we have it on order right now now this deserves an honorable mention this is a beautiful ef9 owned by pio or papa pio as known by most it's actually running a client wire harness but not only that he went through all the way to even change to a proper headlight wiring tail light everything and this took months to finish and man it runs really really good and by good i mean on the dyno all we did was tune the air fuel ratio because it was responding really well and we didn't touch the cam gears and it actually made 184 wheel horsepower on stock bore and stock stroke b16a that's crazy right honestly speaking if we were to build this again today we probably would have made more but as you know our respect is unfallible this engine was built by the late ricky de leon owner and the founder of Ere racing so this is a masterpiece that he did and it runs really really good it's a street car pump gas and no trailer what else do you want from a 13 second car, right? And we'll show you a snippet of two dyno runs of the EF when we were tuning it. And you can hear the sound. Aside from the having the engine in good condition, you definitely know everything is working in harmony. Oh, listen to that engine. Here's another one, and if you build engines, you know this is addicting. So don't forget to check out Clywire page on Facebook. He's more active on his personal Facebook, but messaging him here will get you the response that you need. And for those wondering, they ship internationally, not a problem. They do that all the time. We'll put the link in the description below so you know what to do and you know where to go, right? Unless you're fond of gremlins.